Welcome to Living English. Today, we'll be looking at letters and messages and the best way to ask someone to do something. First, here's the latest episode of our drama, Sisters and Brothers. Steve is taking Anne back to her hotel after their day at the wildlife park. Did you have a good day? Very much. Yeah. Thank you for taking me. How about you? Of course. Not too boring? You must have been there a hundred times. No, not since I was a kid. It was great. Do you like Chinese food? I love Chinese food. I'm going to cook a Chinese meal for you and your family. Really? That'll be great. When? Friday. Fantastic. I'll, I'll see you then. Yes. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, Ms Lee, I didn't see you. Could I have my key, please? Certainly. Here you are. Oh, and there's a message for you. Dear Ms Lee, please call my office. I have some news for you. John Barber, private investigator. What did the message say again? Let's have a closer look. The message says, Dear Ms Lee, please call my office. I have some news for you. John Barber, private investigator. When we write letters, we start by writing dear and then the name of the person we are writing to. In this case, Ms Lee. Notice that her formal title, Ms Lee, is used. We'll look more closely at formal letter writing later in the program. First, let's see how Anne gets the attention of the clerk. <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, Ms Lee, I didn't see you. Anne said, excuse me. We say, excuse me, when we want to get someone's attention. Try saying it with the clip. Sorry, Ms Lee, I didn't see you. <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, Ms Lee, I didn't see you. Now listen to Anne asking for her key. Could I have my key, please? Certainly. Remember that we looked at using could I to make requests in an earlier episode. The best and most polite way to ask people to do things for you is to make requests. You have to be careful that your request doesn't sound like an order. You say, could I at the beginning and please at the end. Could I have my key, please? If you don't say please, a request can sound like an order. Could I have my key? It's always best to add please. Another formal way to make this request is to say, may I have my key please? Watch the clip and try saying, could I have my key please with Anne? Could I have my key please? In our next clip, there's also something we've looked at before on Living English. The expression, going to. See if you can remember what it means. I'm going to cook a Chinese meal for you and your family. Anne said, I'm going to. She means that she will cook a Chinese meal in the future, but she hasn't decided exactly when. Listen to what she says about when she is going to cook the meal. I'm going to cook a Chinese meal for you and your family. Really? That'll be great. When? Friday. She says, Friday? Notice the inflection in her voice. Friday? She's not completely sure. If she was sure, she would say it like this. Friday. Using this kind of inflection indicates that we are not certain. Try saying, Friday? after Anne. Really? That'll be great. When? Really? That'll be great. When? Friday? Now listen to the way Steve and Anne say goodbye. Fantastic. I'll, I'll see you then. Yes. Bye. 
Bye is a casual way of saying goodbye. It's like saying see you later or see you. Fantastic. Oh, I'll see you then. Yes. Bye. Now let's go from the informal to the formal. Informal means casual, friendly, not official. Formal means official, not casual. Usually, formal letters are to people you don't know. For example, a job application or something related to work. You always start with something called a salutation. You write dear, followed by the formal name of the person you are writing to. If you were writing to me, you would write, Dear Mr. Whittle. If you don't know the name of the person you're writing to, write, Dear Sir or Madam. When you finish the letter, you write, Yours faithfully, followed by your name. If you use the person's name, it's the custom to write, Yours sincerely, followed by your name. It's time to say hello to Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Brenton. Hello everyone. Do you write letters? Not very often. I use email and text messaging. Excuse me, I have a message now. What does it say? Please pick up milk. What does that mean? It means that my friend wants me to buy some milk on the way home after work. People don't use lots of words for messages and they leave some out. It still says, please. Yes. That's because it's a request, not an order. How would you make the same request in ordinary speech? Say it after me. Could you pick up some milk, please? Let's listen again to Anne making a request. Could I have my key, please? Certainly. Here you are. Here you are. You say, here you are, when you give people things. Give it a try. Ask me for something. OK. Could I have your phone, please? Yes. Here you are. Thank you. Now it's your turn. Say, here you are, with the clip. Could I have my key, please? Certainly. Could I have my key, please? Certainly. Here you are. Nice phone. Could I have my phone back, please? Here you are. Another message. What does this one say? It says, sorry, forget milk. What does that mean? It means that I don't have to buy the milk. I should forget about it. It doesn't say please. It, it says sorry. Why? Well, he's apologising for making me think I had to stop and buy some milk later. He doesn't write please because he's not asking me to do anything. We sometimes say sorry to be polite, like in this clip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, Ms Lee, I didn't see you. Try saying sorry, Ms Lee, with the clip. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, Ms Lee, I didn't see you. There are a few phrases in English which can be used to say sorry or apologise. Let's practise them. Oh, sorry. That's OK. When we bump into someone or have a small accident like this, we often just say sorry. Try it at home. Sorry. And in reply, I say, that's OK. Try it at home. That's OK. Or I could say, that's all right, you try. That's all right. And here's a common Australian phrase. No worries, you try. No worries. Let's look at some other ways of saying sorry. You can say, I'm sorry, or you can say, pardon me. Try it at home. Pardon me. Another way of saying it is, I beg your pardon. This is more formal. 
try it after me. I beg your pardon. This is a more serious apology. Like this. I beg oh. your pardon. I'm so sorry. No worries. We use the same phrases if we don't understand something or don't hear it and we want the person to repeat what they said. Excuse me? Yes? Do you have the time? 8.30. I beg your pardon? It's 8.30. You can also use I'm sorry or sorry in the same way. Excuse me? Can I help you? Uh, do you have the time? Ten past nine. Sorry? It's ten past nine. Thank you very much. But notice how the inflection changes from when we say sorry to apologise. We'll show you. Sorry. That's all right. Sorry? I said that's all right. There's no need to shout. Practice with me the different ways of saying sorry. Sorry. Sorry? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pardon me. Pardon me. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Let's look at another clip now. You must have been there a hundred times. Oh, not since I was a kid. Anne says, you must have, or you must have been there a hundred times. What does she mean by that? She thinks it's certain that Steve has visited the wildlife park many times before. So I could say to Brenton, you must have seen a kangaroo before. Yes, I have. And Michelle, you must have been to Sydney. Yes, I have. Try at home saying, you must have. First, been to the zoo. You must have been to the zoo. Flown in a plane. You must have flown in a plane. Had an ice cream. You must have had an ice cream before. There's one thing in that clip that's confusing, Michelle. What's that? Well, let's watch again. You must have been there a hundred times. Oh, not since I was a kid. Steve says, not since I was a kid. But a kid is a baby goat, isn't it? Yes. But kid is also slang for young boy or girl. So what are the other words for people at different ages? Well, we start off as a baby. The plural is babies. Then when we start to walk, we're called toddlers. Young boys and girls are called children. One is called a child. And then we are called teenagers, from the age 13 to 19. And then adults. And that's all we have time for today. Next time, we'll look at reporting the past and using did and didn't.